In 2019, psychoanalytic psychotherapist Francis Williams presented a paper at an international conference in London, focusing on various bodies of my photographic work. She drew parallels between psychoanalysis and photography within the context of South African history over the past 30 years. The Never Again essay was part of the presentation and I have interwoven excerpts by Francis into this video. This project directs attention to both the complexity and the trauma experienced by South Africans. It's personal in that it mirrors my own sense of unease with the present state of the nation, as well as my fears for its future. It also reflects my sense of disappointment and anger that such hard-won freedoms have been squandered. During a more optimistic period during Mandela's tenure as president, I photographed in color, but as my hope for the country faded, I soon returned to black and white. It was mainly what I used for my work during apartheid times. Primo Levi's harrowing personal experience of the Holocaust led him to make the assertion that the human species would never again be able to deny its inherent potential for horrific cruelty. Nelson Mandela said the following in his inauguration speech in 1994. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful love will again experience the oppression of one by another. This message has unfortunately been steadily undermined over the decades since Mandela stepped down. And now the country has entered a downward spiral of corruption and mismanagement, along with an exponential increase in crime and unemployment. Genocidal acts have continued after the Holocaust and it resulted in the death of an estimated 10 million people. This reaffirms another of Primo Levi's observations. It happened, therefore it can happen again. Initially I started creating this essay in response to the xenophobic attacks by South Africans on fellow Africans living within the country, as well as to the more general escalation of violence within the society, directed especially at women and children. This brief paper is a psychoanalytical response to Graham's essay, Never Again. I find this body of work hard to look at, or to think about. The images say something as much about the external state of the nation as they do about internal states of mind. And of course it is Graham who is doing the looking, and me who is looking at what he has seen. For me, some of these images capture a visual impression of not only what hopelessness looks like, but are also an unconscious response to the broader sense of uncertainty and trauma felt by many South Africans. Since the presentation of this work in London in 2019, we have relocated from Johannesburg and now live in the Western Cape, which is jokingly referred to as the top deck of the Titanic. This province is, in relative terms, more functional than the rest of the country. Factional conflict within the country's ruling party, the African National Congress, spilled over into the broader society in 2021, following the imprisonment of the former president, Jacob Zuma. This spate of rioting and looting left 354 people dead and 2 million people jobless. Aggression can be a defense, and from my experience is a frequent feature of a clinician's response when working with highly traumatized patients. British psychoanalyst and seminal thinker Melanie Klein has contributed significantly to our understandings of violence and aggression. Kleinian descriptions of the infantile state of mind include destructiveness, sadism, rage and despair. As adults, says Klein, we invariably move backwards and forwards between earlier developmental states of mind and maturer states. If we have had a normal enough early life, we can find our way out of the regress reasonably quickly. However, when the infant's living conditions inside or out were not healthy, the regress to an infantile state will be to an unhealthy state. I think that this is what some of Graham's images portray. South Africa as a state has had an unhealthy, shattering history. When there is trauma such as this, legislative dehumanization, sometimes there can be no progress. There is a defenselessness and the regress can be to a terrifying space. It is no coincidence that the photographs in this essay are back to black and white, visually symbolic of splitting, 
which is a defensive position and rigid. South Africa's police minister has said that the country borders on a war zone. More people have been murdered in South Africa over the last 10 years than died in the Afghanistan war or in the bombing of Hiroshima. It's estimated that 40% of South African women will be raped within their lifetime. Practical newspaper adverts encourage rape victims to wrap their clothes in newspaper to preserve vital evidence, even though less than 9% of rapists are convicted. Seeing trauma, witnessing it in whatever way, can elicit either an under or over identification with victims. Partly this will be to do with having to confront our own aggression and destructiveness. A human or humans have dehumanized another human being. We are human too. Our guilt about our own aggression, our wish to reparate, our pull towards mindless dismissal of the devastation of what people are capable of and the effects this might have, will all contribute to the defense of storms within us. We act rather than we think, sometimes we hit out. In Johannesburg, South Africa, I find myself doing some sort of horrific and perverse litmus test when I feel in the dark and scared, sometimes for my life. Who is destroying the peace in my home? While working on this essay, I would find myself oscillating between anger, fear and sadness. I might be fearful while photographing in a desolate spot, then angry at the deprivation that I witnessed, and then when driving home, sadness at the throng of people begging at each traffic light. Only a third of South Africans are gainfully employed and nearly half rely on social grants. Since the first democratic elections in 1994, change has been a South African imperative, as it is, on the surface, the reason patients seek psychological help. However, as the years have passed, I've discovered that change doesn't never happen, but it can take a long time. There are countless reasons for this, why change is so difficult, why resisted. The repetition compulsion explains many, such as the wish for control, for masochistic and other gratifications, for the familiar, however horrible. Change and endings are extraordinary achievements and should be celebrated, but there isn't a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Likewise, we have discovered this in South Africa, the nation. The psyche of the South African nation has been battered for centuries. People have endured wars, colonial rule, apartheid, and now the failed post-apartheid democracy. The country is deep in economic junk status and is now at risk of a possible grey listing because of its inability to bring financial criminals to justice. More and more South Africans see no future for themselves. While the main victims of this neglect are the most vulnerable, two-thirds of the youth are unemployed and we are at the bottom of the heap in terms of the world education levels. As I stood watching Nelson Mandela walk free from prison in 1990, I felt a huge weight had been lifted from the country. My response was mirrored by most South Africans as well as by most observers around the world. My loss of hope at our fulfilling Mandela's dream has played itself out in the same manner as the five stages of grief. Although I feel that my present photographic work is more rooted in the acceptance stage, I feel that this project was largely fueled by the anger stage. To expect South Africa with a past like it has to change in any way but very painfully and traumatically in 26 years is perhaps to be in denial about the damage done. A projection of our own wishes and hopes, mine and Graham's, for quick change and a magical fix. The trauma of the past will be carried over generations. As one sees in the room with some patients, the transgenerational transmission of trauma might mean that healing and recovery will only take place in another lifetime. Susan Sontag says, in regarding the pain of others, narratives can make us understand, photographs do something else, they haunt us. Never again is a harrowing visual document of a stage in time and a state of mind.